Welcome to our lecture online. Just to make sure we know how to do these types of problems, let's take a slightly different problem and again find the power supplied by the source and the power consumed by the load. Notice in this case, we also have a generator that has some internal impedance, so we've included that. We have some impedance along the line, and of course we have the impedance of the load. The equations are exactly the same as before, but in this case, we're only going to calculate the power supplied by the source and the power absorbed by the load. You'll see that there will be less power absorbed by the load because, of course, there will be some loss along the way, and there's some loss in the generator as well, which not, we're not going to calculate separately. Here, to make it easier, we've already calculated the current along the line. It's going to be the voltage from the source divided by the total impedance. Yes, we do have to include the impedance of the generator along the line and of the load in order to calculate the current. So we sum them all up, that's the total impedance of all three sources, and notice we have a current of 3.75 amps with a phase angle of minus 8.66 degrees. So let's now calculate the power supplied. Notice that's going to be a negative three times because we have three phases times the voltage, times the current, and of course we need to take the complex conjugate of the current. So this is going to be equal to a negative three times the voltage. The voltage is going to be 120 volts with a phase angle of 30 degrees. Multiply that times the current, and of course since the complex conjugate we have to change the angle to a positive 8.66, like that. And that should give us the power supplied by the source. So this is equal to a negative. And let's multiply all that out. So that's 360 times 3.75. That gives us 1350 with a phase angle of 38.66 degrees. And then if we want to find the magnitude and or the real and imaginary part formatted that so we multiplied uh, 1350 times 3866 take the cosine of that and that gives us 1054.2 of course we still need to know the negative have the negative here so 1054.2 that is the real part and then plus j the imaginary part of that 38.66, take the sine of that, multiply it times 1350, that gives us 834.3. And of course, that would be in terms of watts, and negative because it's power provided by the source, and since the positive means power absorbed, provided is therefore a negative quantity. Now let's have power absorbed by the source. That's going to be equal to, the equation we use is for the three phases, three times the magnitude of the line current squared multiplied times the impedance of the load. So it's the Y impedance. So this is equal to three times the magnitude of the current, 3.75 squared. And then we multiply times the impedance. The impedance is going to be 24 plus J19. Of course, we want to convert that into magnitude and phase angle format, so we can multiply. So this is 3 times 3.75 squared times, okay, 24 squared plus 19 squared. Take the square root, that gives us 30.61 with a phase angle of, uh, let's see here, that would be 19 divided by 24, take the inverse tangent of that, which is 38.37 degrees. Like that, so this would be equal to, now we're ready to multiply, so we have 3 times 3.75 squared times 30.61, that gives us 1291.4 with a phase angle of 38.3. 37 degrees and now we can convert that into real imaginary parts so multiply this times 38.37 take the cosine of that equals the real part of 
point four plus j. So now we have thirty eight point three seven. Take the sign of that, multiply times twelve ninety one point four, and that gives us eight zero one point six. Positive because it's power absorbed by the source, not by the source, but by the load. And uh, that would be in terms of watts as well. So now take a look. Notice the amount of power provided is 1054.2 plus J834. Power absorbed by the source is 1012 plus J801. Notice slightly less power absorbed, the real power, and slightly less the imaginary part or the inductive part of the power absorbed. And of course, this is just temporarily absorbing getting back to the system. The real power absorbed and provided is right here. Notice that slightly less, the difference between the two is of course, the power that's lost along the line and the power that's lost in the generator wiring itself. And so that's how we find the power supplied and the power provided in a three-phase system. That's how it's done.